everybody. Welcome back to Rocky Mountain Homestead. Tonight, it's nighttime. Um, I tried tried filming this earlier today and uh, it wasn't happening. So I'm trying to get this video out to you guys for tomorrow. And it is going to be a tip Thursday homeschool video. My goal is to have one of these out every Thursday. Realistically, it, it's kind of following an every other Thursday pattern. So we'll see. I'm trying to be more intentional with this. But let's go ahead and get started. So for today's topic, I want to cover five things, um, five tips that I hope would be helpful if you are um, homeschooling and you're homeschooling multiple ages. And by multiple ages, I'm kind of gearing this video more towards babies and toddlers because that that can be a challenge and I've, I've lived it, I've been through it. And um, for any of you that may be new to homeschooling, I hope this video is helpful for you. Or if you have a baby coming into the picture and you haven't, you know, had that come up yet during your homeschool journey, um, these five tips I hope will be helpful to somebody. Okay, so for tip number one, if you are about to have a baby or you are going to have a new baby during your homeschool year, my biggest tip is keep them with you. Um, keep them with you. You can wear them. You can have, you know, on a carrier. That's what I did with some of my babies. I'm going to do my best to try and insert some pictures also throughout this video. We'll see if it works. Um, but anyway, sometimes I have like a little pack and play or a swing off to the side. And babies are pretty easy. In my opinion, I know somebody out there maybe with a new baby is telling me otherwise and maybe has some colorful words for me, but babies, in my opinion, are pretty easy. Um, they sleep a lot. They sleep a lot. And you can get a lot done during that time. Um, the younger they are, the more they sleep. So you can have a swing going where you know you nurse them, change them, put them in the swing. They fall asleep and you can carry on homeschooling your kids. Um, once again, the carrier, most of the time I'd always fall asleep in the carrier while I was wearing them. Or, you know, you can um, lay them down on the ground depending on their age on um, one of those little activity mats. So my biggest thing with babies is keep them with you. Keep an eye on them. That way, you know, when they wake up from a nap, you're not having to run wherever they are across the house and go get them. You can continue homeschooling and have some extra diapers, maybe some wipes on hand in the room so you can stay in that room and focus on school with your kids. And changing a dirty diaper is really not going to be an interruption for you because you have everything there ready to go. Tip number two would be be strategic with nap times. Um, if you have newer babies, like I said, babies were always easy for me. They just sleep, you know. I mean, you can choose to hold them, but really you can, you know, you wake them up, change them, nurse them, change them, hold them for a few minutes, lay them back down, they're out. And they sleep like a lot. <laughs> so I always got the most done when I had a newborn baby because they just, they sleep a lot. Um, except my oldest who was colicky. That was a nightmare, but I had no other kids. Um, and she was mainly colicky for like 11 hours at night, not during the daytime anyway. But every, every baby's different, but for all eight of my babies during the daytime, they, they slept a lot. Um, so with toddlers, that's going to be a different story. As babies get older, they tend to stay up more. If they have siblings, they're definitely going to stay up more. They're going to get to a point where they want to keep up with their older siblings. Like they know their siblings are awake um, and they want to know what's going on. They, I almost feel like they don't want to miss out. My kids, when they turned like, like maybe 18 months old, two years old, mine all stopped napping by the age of two. I'd have friends who are like, oh yeah, my four-year-old's down for a nap. I'm like, what did, what did you give them? <laughs> like, clue me in here because my kids all stopped taking naps at two. 
most of them 18 months old, but by the age of two, they didn't nap. So I didn't have that luxury, um, but I just, I had a lot of kids and I totally got it. I'm like, of course they're not gonna wanna sleep. You know, come dinner time, they're a train wreck because they really needed that nap, but they wanna keep up with everybody. They know everyone's awake, they wanna be included and involved and they wanna know what's going on. So just if your kids still nap or you have toddlers and they still nap, do the harder subjects during nap time. Um, as my babies got older and I noticed like, you know, they were really starting to fight nap time. As soon as they were down and I knew they were safe and they were contained in their crib, um, I would, you know, dart to our homeschool room with the kids and we're like, okay, we're knocking out math. We're knocking out the tough subjects where, you know, sometimes you gotta elaborate a little more. Sometimes you gotta use your whiteboard or chalkboard or pen and paper and you gotta give them examples and kind of, you know, be more on one, um, one on one with the teaching of the lesson. And so whatever was the most difficult subjects, we'd switch our whole schedule around. So say we did math earlier in the day, but the baby or toddler napped in the afternoon, we would wait till the afternoon to do the harder subjects. So just being very strategic with nap times um, is, is a big thing. Number three, my tip would be keeping them entertained and involved. Um, we, you know, have a lot of kids, but even when we only had a couple, I feel like the little ones always wanted to be involved. If they were toddlers, they wanted to feel like a big kid and they wanted to do school with their older siblings, even if I had nothing to give them. Um, and I had, I had that problem all this past year, my twins and Joshua. So my twins are about to turn five, um, very shortly, August 10th, <laughs> they're about to turn five. And then, so they were four. So I had my four year old twins and my three year old all this past year wanting to do school with us. And I'm like, I don't have anything for you. Like, I'm not gonna bust out my preschool stuff cause I just, I didn't have the time. And my oldest daughter was struggling a little bit with math. So I needed like to be completely on board helping my older kids with school. and. I was just like, I don't know what to do. Um, and I, I was struggling because it was three of them. It wasn't just one, you know, it was it was three. I, they're like triplets to me. I mean, they just, they all wanted to do school. And I'm like, I don't have anything for you. So, um, yeah, but they like wanted to do school, school. But sometimes what I do and what I did have to do this school year is I bought a little caddy in my homeschool room. You don't have to do that, but I had a little caddy filled up and I'd have, you know, on the top, it's just all these little Play-Dohs that they can reach. It's within their reach. Um, so tons of Play-Doh containers. The middle, I had Play-Doh toys, you know, the little machines and construction trucks and just little things um, that are accessories for Play-Doh. And they would just come in the room and pick a little spot and they would do that. Or I had a little bucket that I kept in the homeschool room with miscellaneous Legos my kids so i used to have the rule i'm like if i step on a lego <laughs> or i see legos out they're mine like they're mine um and i'm i'm not wasteful so i'm like we paid money for this my husband would just be like suck it up with the vacuum who cares they should have picked their stuff up and i'm just like well <laughs> I don't want to waste the Legos <laughs> like they use them. So what I did is I had a container and I started collecting them. And that container grew from like just a handful to like, I mean, probably a full container you could buy at the store, like one of those yellow containers with assorted Legos. That's how many I accumulated. So I don't even know who they are. I'm like, well, tough. You didn't pick your stuff up. But now I have that in the homeschool room. So the littles had some Legos to play with and, you know, they would sit and do that. Um, there was, you know, construction paper and crayons and markers. Of course, you can give them something to draw. You can also go to the store and get like those um, preschool age books. And I mean, I did, but I also knew they weren't going to like do them correctly. <laughs> that was my struggle. I'm like, no, you have to do it this way. You have to trace this and, you know, teaching them how to do things where I'm just like, okay, just let them scribble in it or whatever. It's keeping them occupied. They think it's their school. It's a legit textbook for them. Um, but keep them entertained, keep them involved, make them feel, you know, I think they just, they want to feel 
like like a big kid and you know just let them hang out and keep them entertained babies you know you might want some bigger blocks they sell bigger blocks they can sit there and play with those I think Melissa and Doug have like those cardboard you know cardboard blocks back in our previous house we lived in um, before we bought this one we had a huge homeschool room the whole basement was the homeschool room it was massive like way more space than anyone would ever need and we had like you know a little playhouse thing for the kids and the kitchen center and I mean like it was <laughs> it was huge but it, it, it worked out great because like they could make a mess over there and it wouldn't get in our way and now we're like crammed in this homeschool room eight kids and it's like Play-Dohs out, Legos are out, papers out, crayons are out. I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't focus on what I'm supposed to be teaching my kids. Like everything's everywhere. But just keep them involved. Give them something to do and they will be happy more than likely. Might be a mess. You can all work together at the end of every homeschool day. Like I'd pull my kids aside. I'm like, we're doing a 10 minute tidy. And that's what I would call it. And it never really needed more than 10 minutes. But I also have a lot of kids. So maybe that's why it went by so fast. But just that tip. That was big. That was huge. That's something I just went through this previous year. And um, I'm glad it's over. And I'm glad they're able to self-entertain now. Thank you, Jesus. Tip number four. I know. Some people, this is going to be a little controversial for some people. Um, screen time. Sometimes you just have to be comfortable with screen time. Um, I'm not big on screens. If I was not married to my husband, we would not have that TV in here. Like, I just, I don't like TV. Um, I feel like during my childhood, I was put in front of the TV a lot. And I don't like TV. TV. I just, I don't, I, it, it's hardly, hardly ever on, um, same with video games. Like we have video game system. We got our kids a couple of years ago. Like they rarely ask to touch it. Like they don't even ask to touch it. I'll be like, you guys want to play a video game or something? Like we did buy this thing and it just kind of sits there and collects dust. But, um, you know, they have their tablets, they have Amazon fire tablets and I'm very picky because you really have to go through those. There's a lot of apps. There's a lot of things on there that you might want to look at first as a parent, even within certain age ranges, even little kids. So I've gone through it all. Um, sometimes, sometimes you just got to turn a TV on to save your sanity. And you know, it's not caving or giving in. I'm not talking about like if your child having a meltdown, if my kids having a meltdown to watch TV, they're not watching TV. I'm like, no, you don't, you don't get what you want by whining. I'm very strict with that. And I've always been that way with my kids. But there are times where like, if they're just overstimulated or like they want to do Play-Doh, then they want to do this, then they want to do this. And they're jumping all over the place. And it's like, okay, okay, why don't we put a show on? And okay, yeah, we'll, we'll put a show on. Or, you know, you want to play a game on a tablet? What kid doesn't say no to that? My kids, that's one thing they won't say no to. Um, but sometimes I have had to just tell myself it's okay. You know, they're, they're not sitting there like spending even an hour on it a day. Like I, I used to give them like, um, you get an hour on your tablet. That's it. You get an hour of media time, whether it's a show, whether it's your tablet, pick and choose. Um, but sometimes you do, you do have to just get comfortable sometime with the fact that might have to be a last resort, even if you're completely against it. Um, take advantage of the screens sometimes in technology. And what I would do sometimes if it was a show, I would throw a leapfrog on there. I'm like, then they're at least learning something. There's educational cartoons out there. Um, I would always strive to kind of put something like that on. Um, and then same with the tablets. I mean, like my kids games, my little kids games that they have, they're usually like, you know, puzzles or things they have to figure out. And, um, they're, they're using their brain. Like my son, my four year old, he's like really bright. Like my husband and I looked at some of the stuff he does and just like, oh my goodness, <laughs> like he's on a whole nother level. I'm, I'm like, I, I would have failed, um, whatever game he's playing. But, um, sometimes, you know, screen time just sometimes it happens and don't feel guilty because we all, we all eventually, you know, hit that point where you, you just need something. And number five, last and final tip, manage your expectations. Um, that one is, is really hard for me. In all honesty, I have this expectation of how our day should look, how it should go how it's supposed to go, 
um, and I've, I've, I've made lots of mistakes throughout my homeschooling journey, throughout a lot of things with my expectations. Um, sometimes you just need to manage them. Yes, we have, we have goals and we have boundaries and we have this outlook of how we want things to be, but sometimes you just need to look at your expectations and, and realize things aren't always going to go smooth Things aren't always going to go the way you want them to go. Things are just sometimes, just remember it's temporary. Um, things sometimes just don't work. And, you know, you may try all those things and you may still have a child that just is like desperate for your attention and doesn't want to sit and watch a show. Um, they don't want to color. They don't want to do Play-Doh. They just like need you. And sometimes you just need to, Stop everything and recognize that and you can either choose to like give your kids that are old enough to do school um, I call it independent work it's it's work where basically they kind of know what's expected of them like spelling we've always used spelling you see and um, as as one of their one of their curriculums and that's super easy like unless your kids just starting out and does not know like my kids knew how, what to write what to highlight what to look for what to underline they knew all that that was super easy and that's you know something that they work on where I'm like okay the dryer stopped like 30 minutes ago I'm gonna go swap laundry real quick um, dishwasher stopped or I need to prep lunch you know and that's like one of those subjects where I I can walk away and know my kids know what to do and they're gonna get it done so um, you know if you have independent work for them to do something to work on while you walk away or step aside um, that that's great but sometimes you just need to scratch everything and and realize like, okay, we just, we need to stop right now. Um, let's take a break. Throw your kids outside for recess. If it's nice weather out, my kids beg to always go outside. So I don't even have to tell them to go outside. They're like, okay, I want to go outside and go run and do this. Okay. That's great. Um, but sometimes you just have to lower your expectations and it's not always going to go smooth. And when you've exhausted everything else, don't exhaust yourself. Just stop. And sometimes all they need is like 10 minutes and you just, spend 10 minutes with them and they're like bored with you they're like okay bye um, and they go off and do their own thing and that's the majority of the time like my kids completely like mom want to build Legos with me okay you know I finally get the time to stop and sit and play Legos and we're sitting not even five minutes and then they're like oh I want to go play trucks too because they hear someone playing trucks in the other room and I'm like I just got down on the floor I'm trying to build with you and like like didn't you want didn't you want to play Legos with me um so you know just sometimes lower your expectations and realize things things might not go smooth but it's okay it's temporary it's a season of life that I miss all those days I was like completely frazzled and just like ready to pull my hair out and just wanting to scream and cry um, and asking myself why am I even doing this like just the really hard days I stop and look back and and I'm like I would do anything to go back to those days because one of my favorite sayings that it's so true um, is the the days are long, but the years are short. And to realize my oldest could potentially be moving. I mean, she can move out in like four and a half years. That's crazy. Um, just looking at the ages of my kids and I'm just like, what happened? Like, where did the time go? And it's such a short season. And you miss those days. You will look back in those days that drove you nuts. You're going to look back and be like, oh my gosh, where is that kid? Like, <laughs> where is that kid? You know, they, they, they want to go do their own thing. They like, you know, they're just completely independent and they, they act like they don't need you anymore. And just realize whatever stage you're at, it is so temporary and it's going to feel like a struggle and it's going to feel like forever. Um, going through those difficult seasons, but it goes so fast and then you look back and it's like what I would do just to go back and um, and Relive those days again and you know once that time's gone. It's gone. You can't get it back So just remember to breathe mama. You've got this um, Breathe seriously and just know it will pass <laughs> it, it will pass it's so temporary and enjoy those babies enjoy those interruptions enjoy those 
those toddlers and the mischief they get into um, because you will look back and you will miss it and you will wish that you did things differently. You will have, you know, your thoughts, your regrets of like, oh gosh, I wish I would have, you know, <laughs> been a little less harsh. I, you know, y you're going to look back and you don't want, you don't want to think, I wish I could have done something different. I wish I would have, you know, um, done things differently, handled situations differently, um, and embrace them instead of <laughs> resent, resented them. So that is my five tips for you. And I am going to throw this in here at the end, if all else fails. Okay. If they don't want you and they don't want the Play-Doh and they don't want the Legos and they don't want the coloring crayons and the books or the naps, whatever, it's okay to barter with your kids. <laughs> you can trade off. And this is something I, 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 I had to do sometimes like the past two years, especially with the three littles, you know, being so close in age, not being able to get because I had like the three in diapers at a point And I was just like, oh my goodness, every time I stop, you know, and, and try to focus in on homeschooling again or teaching something, somebody went to the bathroom, somebody did this, somebody spilled that. And I just got so overwhelmed and I would trade off with my three older girls. I'm like, listen, we, we need to take turns. I need you guys to take turns. Okay. And that's what I did. And I'm like, okay, Faith, my oldest, I'm going to work um, on your math with you, your most difficult subject you can't do yourself. And, you know, it was very scattered. It was very chaotic, but it worked. Um, it got us through the season that we were in. But I'd be like, okay, I'm going to help you. We're going to get through this. And while I'm doing this with you, everybody else is just going to be, you know, playing with the kids. Or I'd have like the second oldest sibling, you know, can you go in the toy room with them? Can you go in their bedroom with them? And just, you know, read them a book, play with them, get some Legos out or let them play in your room with you. And, and that worked great. It worked great. And I'd help Faith with her math. And then it's like, okay, now I'm going to do Graceland's math. Um, Faith, you go out and you swap. So everybody else would either be doing their school and I just have one sibling go help or I would just have all the other siblings go and just work one-on-one -on -one with the difficult subjects. And it took a lot more time, but we got through it. We managed and I just realized sometimes you need to trade off um, with your older kids if you do have older kids. And um, that's, that's what I had to do a few times last year and the year before because I just realized like, uh, we can't even do it. There was just, and just having the three of them in the homeschool room playing Legos or Play-Doh and talking all together, you know, my older kids were getting frustrated. Mom, I can't concentrate. I can't do this, but they couldn't leave the room and do it themselves because they needed help. And it's like, okay, um, I get it. They're interrupting, they're distracting and you can't concentrate. So it's like, you feel bad for your kids and it's like, they should be able to concentrate and do their school in peace. And then, you know, this one's fighting over this toy and this one's crying about this and this one's pulling papers down and scribbling on their work that they completed. <laughs> um, you know, it's so sometimes as a last resort, I would say if you have older siblings, yes, you can do that. Um, and it does work. It just stretches your day out a little bit more. And I mean, my kids always jumped, like sometimes I didn't even have to ask. They just jumped and they're like, Hey, I'll go watch them. Um, you know, you guys finish this. And I'm like, okay, great. Um, so just remember you got this it's a season, it's temporary, and you're gonna look back and you're probably gonna laugh because I laugh and I laugh mainly at myself and how how ridiculously, overly, dr unnecessarily dramatic I'd be over it. Like, oh, I can't do anything. Like just one minute, can I get one minute to teach this lesson? And they don't care. They didn't care what I was saying or, or you know, begging for. They're like, whatever, mom. <laughs> so um, just letting you know, you got this. Um, and those are my five tips for you if you are teaching multiple ages. Um, if you guys have already taught multiple ages um, and there's something that I missed or another tip that you have that maybe a new homeschool mom might, you know, watch this video and glance through the comments, go ahead and leave it down below. Um, I, I think personally for me, comments are always welcome, especially if it's something that could be helpful um, related to the video for other moms to see. And I'm sure there's stuff that I missed, but for me personally, those are my five biggest tips when, oh, and patience, like you, you got to be patient. And I think homeschooling not only has grown my kids, it's grown me, it's changed me, it's taught me 
so much about myself and so many areas I realized I needed to change about myself. So um, it's a it's a learning process, not just for your children, but for you too. And you will learn and you will grow. And um, anyway, if you are new to homeschooling, you got this. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. If you like these Tip Thursday videos, please give this video a thumbs up. I look at that as my feedback. Um, and if you are new to the channel and you enjoy these type of videos or homemaking videos, homesteading videos, um, cooking from scratch, a day in the lives, go ahead and subscribe to the channel um, because those are the type of videos that I put out. And these specific homeschool videos, I really try to put out just for encouragement or to try and you know share tips and tricks that I've learned throughout the 10 years of homeschooling my children. So anyway, I will see you guys on the next video. Until then, take care and God bless.